say, a good photograph is worth taking well. That means if you just take a little bit of an effort to take the time, look for a better angle, uh, look for a better settings in your camera, then you get a better photo. Of course, it's easy to point and shoot, it's easy to frame a little bit, and then you got a little instant photo, but with a little work. Girls like putting makeup on, and if they look stunning, they're not gonna be saying, ah, yeah, I wake up like this every day. Sometimes they say that, they lie, <laughs> but you know, they look agree. Then it takes a little bit of work to look stunning. Yeah, I'm not gonna go out of my house and hair product. I'm gonna go out of my But you know, it's the same with photographs. It's all about the sun was almost down and I think it was in Chagao. So I had to wait for the server to get to my camera. Lovely. Okay. Alright. So, you know, it's perfect because it's summer, right? It's almost summer. So, a little bit of finding the right moment, finding the right frame. You know, it doesn't take much to um, get a better photo. Sometimes all you need to do is step back, or move to the right, or move to the left, and frame. Sometimes, especially with your smartphone, or with your Hello, um, mirrorless everyone. camera, all you have to do is zoom in, and you got a proper framing. Hi, Sandara Rivera. I, I believe that it's always better Jonathan, to get a good shot God, right is. inside the camera first. So you won't have to edit. You have to put lots of effort to try to make it better. Okay, so get the right shot right in the camera Bye. right at the moment. And sometimes the best photographers actually don't need to work on their shots too much because they have the patience and they're training their eye to find what is photographable. Hi Cyrus Dahe. A lot of photographers out there have the gift why is that? It, it needs a little bit of motivation, it needs a little bit of training. It's a little bit, uh, needs a little bit of opening up your eyes. Not literally opening up your mind. It needs a little bit more observant of what's going on around you. Somebody would go around and take a shoot, uh, take a shot, maybe a rock or maybe normally just pass by. But when you see the photo, you're stunned because it looks great. So it takes a little bit of resourcefulness, being a little bit more observant, and yes, a little bit of sipa, you know, put a little more effort. <coughs> okay. Depending on what you like to see, there are different types of settings. And in what you have, your cameras are actually very, very capable. I had one billion web. Understand it. Valerie Arpina. Then, you know, you'd be able to take fantastic photos much better than you could actually imagine. Because the cameras are as, uh, as available as they are in any kind of mall or any kind of uh, store out there, they are so bad. And what you need to do is really tap that kind of technology that we're putting in there. If, uh, like for example, this one. Ricardo Delisa, hello. Camera, but it's all about the setting. I knew that this was going to be uh, a very tricky shot because I was trying to capture the shadows in the sky. Of course, you can't do that because there was also timing involved. Okay, so LJ I need a very fast shutter Hi. speed. Anybody sexy models, with that? Very fast shutter speed. So you know, Josh Ma. Uh, don't be scared to. Yeah delve into the manual settings. I know that it's, you know, it's, it's very convenient to shoot um, uh, automatic. Hi, Mark remote, Joseph. But it's only when you really step out of your comfort zone <laughs> and really embrace the manual settings. Sometimes you won't be, you won't be going back Hi, John, to your automatic settings So understanding how your camera now. works. Uh, Thanks, I needed my... a high ISO, meaning I needed my camera Rolando to be light, PI. sensitive. Okay, so speed. I can have a fast shutter speed. But I always explain why all that works Hello. But of course, if your shutter uh, takes that photo in a very short moment, like this is Hi, Alexis, a second. 
Lodi mo to, maybe. Hi, Carlito. Hi, Chris Lopez, na nasa Abu Dhabi. Ingat ka dyan palagi. Nakatawa ko sa'yo, Ate. Ate kayo si Oteza. Pinakamayaman na nakilala ko sa buong mundo. Hi, Paul Guzman. JMW Wheels po po ako. If you have a shot in mind, Okay? Obviously, yes, this car is easy to, you know, to put it on auto setting. If a car is running by, Shara passing Guerrero. by like Hello. that. Take a shot and put it on the camera. Hi, Carla. No. Shooting, right? like, you, get a, you get a crisp shot, in focus, sharp and all that. But the background is Shan also Sarmiento. crisp. Hello. So, yeah, it's good. Jerry but how can you make it exceptional? With Hi, baby shot, Mia. I wanted to make the photo convey motion. Hi, gay Garland. Okay. <laughs> Nalag papa sexy um, sa akin. <laughs> those who are with the king. Yung nurse na nagtatagal ang fans mo sa chat. Like hey, Francis. <laughs> um, you'd probably think I'm using a very fast pace. Hi, J.M. Right here, Pantilano. I was using like uh, one God hundred of a second. That's Ronald not very Sabor fast if you're taking something that's moving quite fast, right? Normally, your settings or or a uh, model so si here, Adi Casey na magdadala sa akin ng Korea 160 of a second is fine right that's no dadalhin niya ang Korea taga picture na lang ako ganun siya kayaman just to freeze the action here i need it hello sorry, Joshua a sore from deep so that i could introduce but that i mark genesis this technique is called panning <laughs> Okay. That means I put my camera on a semi-fast setting at maybe 1, 1.25, 1, 100 of a second, and I'm following the car at an exact pace. So in this case, it was moving this way, probably traveling 80, 100 kilometers per hour, and I'm shooting with a long lens like that. And it's, uh, it takes practice for your shots to be stable, but like I said, the way the settings of your camera would give you the, the benefit of arriving with a shot that's exactly how you planned it and how you planned it to happen. Okay. Sorry, I'm shouting a little bit. Uh, if you're wondering why I'm explaining these things to you, it's uh, for the purpose of giving you a little bit of motivation and understanding how your camera is trying to cope with you. The best lens in the world is not the one that is worth 200, 300,000 pesos. The best lens in the world still is the human. And everything else becomes dark and that's bright. Or if you expose or focus over here, it's, it looks okay over here, but it's dark over there. But it's not how you see it, right? Hi, John. Go. Turn around and scan things. Oh, my God. Everything is proper. You know, like that that is it's the perfection of the eye. Of course, you have to use glasses. But, you know, it starts out as perfect. So that is that is what the lens is trying to achieve. Now, if you understand how that works, how you maximize the control, the control of your camera, then you arrive with better photos. Big deal. You know what? I'm a person who does not really <laughs> like uh, going through operation manual. In fact, if it's a Japanese product, usually the translation or the people uh, who are making the instruction manuals aren't so good. So Thank you. It, it's hard to understand. It's sometimes it's uh, unnecessarily long and elaborate. So the best thing to do about learning your camera is to experiment with it. Use it as often as you can and use don't, don't, be, don't be scared of using different settings in different modes. Thank and you. it's okay to shoot in and use uh, built-in filters, built-in modes like night mode, action mode, uh, portrait mode, you know, cloud view, whatever. It's good, but sometimes get out of your comfort zone and go for the manual. You understand. And that's the only way to understand how your camera works. It's like a language if you're trying to learn. Eventually, you're going to be fluent with it. But you don't practice it, you don't speak it, you're not going to learn it fluently, right? So, 